A new PPP survey of Georgia voters found that, quote, 84% of those polled say that American democracy is either struggling or fragile. Yeah. So Democratic strategist and owner of JC Strategies, Jennifer Holsworth Carp, and Senior Director of Policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute, Rachel Bovard, they join us now to discuss Georgia, obviously, a most recent swing state. It's a place where went Democrat, both seats there in the United States Senate. Rachel, let me start with you. In a successful Republican campaign in order to run against Raphael Warnock, in order to try and retake or in order to take statewide office, given so much of what Trump, how do you navigate these dynamics where so much of the state feels that the democracy itself is so incredibly fragile? Like, How do you do that in a responsible way? Or will it just be irresponsible? Is that the only way to win? Well, democracy is fragile. I think mm-hmm. that's case in point number one. You know, it's dependent upon, dependent upon the social consensus that frays. And if we don't have that, we, we don't self-sustain. But I think going forward, this is very dangerous territory, I think, for both parties, because there's people that make money on both sides questioning the integrity of elections, questioning, you know, yeah. demand it, saying if the, the outcome doesn't, isn't in their favor, that it's because, you know, the election was rigged or on the other side saying we have to upend all of our election laws. It's the only way things can be fair. And we've monetized this industry. And I think its effects have been completely uh, just insurmountable in some ways. I think you're seeing it in these in these polls. But I think more broadly for Republican candidates, you know, it's a general feeling of disenfranchisement, I think, across the board when it comes not just to elections, but like how policies impact them, you know, when they're Mm. told, oh, you weren't, you weren't helped by that corporate tax cut? Well, you're just lazy, you know, or, you know, they, they don't like Facebook, so they go on parlor and then, you know, they get nuked there too. You know, when the House spends, instead of actually trying to pass policy, spends weeks trying to kick Marjorie Taylor Greene out of Congress for Facebook posts from years ago that she's apologized for. I think all those things go into what is a really complicated problem we're dealing with in America right now. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Jen, if you dig into the cross tabs here, you do find that Republicans uh, have a much more dim, dimmer, more dim, whatever, view of American democracy. So fragile and struggling. Fragile is supposed to be like the worst, right? It's really fragile. Struggling is supposed to be slightly better than fragile. And a full 58% of Republicans say that American democracy is fragile. That compares to 37% of Democrats and 45% of independence. Again, this is all in the state of Georgia. What do you make of that? Well, I think this is a direct result of the last few months of a uh, a president at the time and former president now running an active campaign, also very specifically in the state of Georgia, about how the election was stolen and how everything was rigged and how people were voting that shouldn't have been and how dead people were voting. This this is not just a, an anomaly in a poll. This is the result of an active disinformation campaign on the right. And it's wildly irresponsible. And this is what Democrats have been screaming about, saying, look, we can agree to disagree on a lot of policies in Congress and we can agree to disagree on you know whether Donald Trump ever should have been allowed to run for president in the first place, period. There's a lot we can disagree on, but what we simply cannot allow as a country is tearing at the fabric of our voting system. And that's something that up until this point, mainstream Republicans have refused to engage on and they entertain every conspiracy theory that comes across their desk. This is the result of that. Yeah, uh, Rachel, I'm curious from your perspective. I mean, obviously, I know like Stacey Abrams' refusal to concede and all that. And there's just been a real spiral to the bottom, I think, especially in Georgia, which is what happens if Republicans do lose another statewide race there? Will there be some pushback, or not even pushback, some catharsis or understanding that pushing some of this election misinformation has fired back pretty dramatically? Because, as yes, the $2,000 checks and Mitch McConnell's refusal to do that is a huge part of the story. I think another part of the story is Trump's claims um, on the election. How how are people going to grapple with that if they lose another statewide election in Georgia? Well, I hope they've already learned from it in the sense Mm. that, you know, I do think the $2,000 checks were a huge uh, problem for Republicans in Georgia. But also there were, you know, that uh, the effort to say, you know, don't go out and vote because the system's rigged anyway. Like that, those two things, I think, were so damaging to Republicans. But I think, you know, also the point you raised about Stacey Abrams, this was a thesis she has been pushing in Georgia that, you know, 
the left has been disenfranchised and that there's all this kind of conspiracies to kick people off the voter rolls. You know, it's on both sides. And I think it's very, very damaging, I think, it, to and, and Georgia is a proxy, I think, for what could be a more national problem, because what we're seeing in Georgia is both sides spinning claims of if it didn't work out for me, it's because of fraud. Mm -hmm. And how we get past that, I think we have to get past that if we're going to restore some kind of faith in, in our elections. And for Republicans in particular, this means getting back to basics. Mm -hmm. You know, what Stacey Abrams did was actually get out and register voters. Republicans didn't do that. And that's a basic ground game. And that is what gives people faith in their elections when you go back to those kind of basics. So I hope Republicans do that. It's a good, yeah. that's a good point. Well, and the upshot of all this, Jen, and this is also reflected in the survey data, is it leads to a lot more people, and specifically a lot more Republicans, embracing anti-democratic means. So the type of political violence that we saw at the Capitol, for example. This is what happens when you feel that your vote doesn't count, that the election is completely rigged, that nothing you do from legitimate channels is going to ultimately affect the outcome. You end up with political violence. And increase, these are numbers that we've been tracking for a while here about the number of Americans who think that political violence is justified, about the number who think that the system is completely rigged, about the number who see their political adversaries as their greatest existential threat. That ends in an extraordinarily ugly place. Yeah, I just, I can't abide by both siderism on this one. There's empirical data of suppression and people actually being removed from the voter rolls. There was no empirical proof of voter fraud in the 2020 election. Very few cases. And by the way, most of them were on the Republican side, not on the Democratic side. I see Republicans across the country constantly conflating suppression with fraud. There is empirical evidence of suppression. I saw it in a race I was involved in in New York City, a bluest of blue place um, uh, back last spring, right when the pandemic hit, where thousands of votes, thousands of votes were either not cast because ballots weren't received or not counted because they were invalidated. That is empirical voter suppression. Not so with fraud. And we even, to my horror, saw President Trump use that exact race as an example of fraud, which is not the case. We see the Republican side constantly conflating misinformation in order to suppress the vote. It's not fraud. And I think we need to be very clear about that. And that might reduce some of the political violence that is being spurred. I take your point, Jen. Last thing I want to do is relitigate 2018 Stacey Abrams. Um, we really appreciate you guys joining us, and we will see you all next time. Thanks, ladies. Great to have you both. Thank you. Thanks. A lot more rising for you after this.